Good day, comrades and friends. This is Dr. Gabe Roberts, the quantum chiropractor, the subconscious healer, new thought minister, and your expert in energy medicine. One of the most valuable and fundamental truths that came to me years later, I didn't learn this from my experience in functional medicine uh, or my time in chiropractic college, is that the people, if whoever gets sick and who doesn't is not accidental. That our focus as doctors tends to think on things like cancer, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic asthma or psoriasis, eczema, colitis, Crohn's disease, any number of chronic illnesses somehow mysteriously and unfortunately choose a random person. And occasionally we think we can explain, you know, the cause by running functional lab work, including some stool samples, some of the most sophisticated tests in the world. I've ran tests before that are 16 pages long and DNA analysis. And these help us identify certain pathogens, parasites, bacteria, uh, Borella burgdorferi, which is the uh, bacteria known for uh, Lyme's disease, viruses, and assume that these are always the cause of why a person gets sick. Yet, if you kill the pathogens, so you get rid of the liver flukes, you clear out the Borella burgdorferi, the Lyme, you address the Epstein-Barr virus and chronic mono cases, and you clear out the heavy metals and the co-infections, it's only a matter of time before that person becomes ill again, usually very quickly within the next year. And this is nine out of 10 cases. So what I found was completely contrary to this, that there actually are certain identifiable, identifiable patterns, certain personality traits that people unwillingly, without knowing it, unintentionally brought the disease on themselves. And of course, this wasn't their fault. They didn't know they were doing it. What I would like to address today is that most chronic illnesses are due to unconscious patterns, deep emotional problems that lie below the surface of conscious awareness. So I'd like to share with you a closer look at this story and let you make your own decisions based off of this information. In the case of a rare condition called ALS or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which is a degenerative condition of the nervous system and will leave the person suffering with it in a rapidly, completely paralyzed state, yet their mind is still fully intact and the body is paralyzed, resulting in the end of not being able to breathe and death is from respiratory failure. It's a very catastrophic disease with a very dreadful prognosis. And most people who get it are dead within a few years. It otherwise affects healthy people. I know of a case of a woman who was diagnosed of having ALS by one of the leading experts in understanding the condition in British Columbia. And this woman wasn't ready to accept the diagnosis. The doctor who spoke about her case indicated that it was indeed ALS, but it was also related to unconscious patterns. Now her particular story, her name is Rose, is that she was a school teacher and a vice principal at an elementary school in Richmond, in Richmond, DC. And the first symptoms that began to show up on her was not being able to hold her pen in her hand. She would drop the pen uh, because her hands wouldn't fully comply. They wouldn't obey the commands her brain gave. So she began to experience a difficulty in walking as well. 
Now, what's unique in her case is that she refused to go get a medical opinion when she began to experience these symptoms. Rose insisted on continuing the pattern of waking up at 5.30 every morning for months on end, and she would slowly get herself dressed as her fingers continued to give her trouble with buttoning her blouse and, and getting, you know, using zippers and things like that. She would drive herself to school walk with a very troubled gait and always arrive much earlier than the schedule for the classes to begin. She would then struggle with the chalk and her fingers and slowly and very painstakingly write the day's lesson on the chalkboard for the students. And then Rose would presume teaching the rest of the day, go home in the late evening, stay up late at night and do the preparation again for the next day's lesson. Despite this very slow routine, she would still get up at 5.30 the next morning and repeat the same process every single day until she could no longer walk. Now, is this the only time these characteristics appear for cases of ALS? Not at all. In my own life experience, I've witnessed my wife, Tiffany, and she has endured a great deal of trauma in her previous marriage. And her unconscious established a pattern of working very hard to please him, including running his chiropractic office, taking care of the entire clinic and all the patients, on top of suppressing any emotions or voice that she had from within. And she was always striving to do her best day in and day out. Her ex-husband had many problems that began cheating on her, lying about his whereabouts routinely, and even threatened her in harmful ways. Now, this unconscious pattern established in her left her feeling that it was her duty to endure this and not attempt to do anything different. She continued this routine, running his office, managing the patients, suppressing her own feelings and she endured this for 10 years. And in doing so, she developed her own disease pattern within her cells. Despite running a very successful chiropractic office, receiving regular acupuncture and chiropractic adjustments and taking some of the highest quality whole food supplements available to practitioners, as well as eating clean and exercising and being fit, these emotional conditions were building up inside of her underneath the surface. Now, eventually, she began to build up the strength to break this pattern and leave him and leave the only town that she ever knew of to begin her own journey, completely going outside of her comfort zone, which is very rare for people to do. See, the subconscious patterns established do not care about what is harmful or dangerous. It only cares about what is familiar. When a person has a pattern of familiar and they attempt to change it, the subconscious puts up a massive fight to keep that familiar pattern, even if, if, even if it involves developing disease, decay, and possible dangerous consequences. Ever wonder why a woman will continue to go back to her abusive spouse and battered wife cases? Her subconscious sees that circumstance, even if it's a definite threat to her life, as the familiar, and it's terrified of the change, often accompanied by being away from him. Not the case with my wife. And since then, she has developed an inner strength rivaling some of the toughest Marines I've ever met and not seen a majority of people, and I couldn't be more proud of her. However, all the previous time in her past had already left its mark in subsequent consequences, leaving an imprint within her neurology. As shortly after her and I met and began to live our lives together, she found herself not being able to grip pins and would routinely start dropping objects out of her hands at random, a symptom common with ALS. Now we didn't know this at the time, yet this was her body's delayed attempt at saying no. And 
when their behavior or voice had not done so for years. When a person's when a person goes routinely and avoids saying no, the body has ways of saying it for them. Now, this is my own experience. So let's have a closer look at what the medical literature actually says. Everyone whom I've ever met or heard about or read about who has ALS has exactly the same kind of personality and the exact same kind of behavior traits without any exceptions. It doesn't matter who they are. You'll always find these patterns. In fact, in the 1970s, there was a study from Yale University Medical School regarding ALS patients by two psychiatrists, and they wrote the following. These patients invariably invoke admiration and respect from all staff who came in contact with them. Characteristics was their attempt to avoid asking for help, their hard work, study without recourse and asking help from others was very per pervasive. There seemed to have been habitual denials, suppression, isolation of fear, anxiety, and sadness. So again, this means no expressions of any kind of negative emotions whatsoever. Some spoke casually of their deterioration as if it did not matter whatsoever. And some of them did so with an engaging smile. Now, if you consider all this and look closer at Luke Gehring, whom the disease is actually named after in North America, many people may recall that Luke Gehring was a, a great baseball player, first baseman who played for the New York Yankees in the 1930s. He was an all-time uh, star seven times, an all-star seven times, a triple crown winner, and actually voted the most valuable player twice. He also set a record for the number of hits by a New York Yankee, which was only recently broke by Derek Jeter. So this record stood for 80 years. But Lou also set another record that stood for around 60 years, and this was consecutive games played. In other words, he never missed a game. Now, he never missed a game, and it earned him the nickname the Iron Horse. But he was known as the Iron Horse, you know, not because he was made of iron, okay? I mean, he was just a simple human being. He never missed a game because he played when he was momentarily ill, had colds, had flus. And being an athlete, he played through every injury that ever occurred. There was even a moment when his injured hands were x-rayed and it turned out that he had 17 separate fractures in his hands at separate times. Again, he, this never made him stop. He would continue to play through all these injuries. His teammates recalled describing him as grimacing like a maddened monkey in agony when he would catch the ball, but still he never missed a game. There was also a point when a teammate of his, uh, a rookie, got sick with the flu and was a, unable to play. And the managers got upset with this rookie. And Lou immediately defended him, telling the managers that he was sick. You know, he couldn't play. Lou proceeds to take the rookie to his own house where he lived with his mother. And his mother put the rookie in Lou's bed as he himself slept on the couch while his mother nursed this young player back to health, all while he still never missed a game. Now, similar to Rose, this continued until he could no longer walk. Now, this is typical for every person that has ALS. These patients are not to be blamed for causing their own illness. This is not done intentionally or deliberately but these are all unconscious patterns. They are done by conditioning within the subconscious below their awareness. And this compulsive and unyielding identification of duty and role and responsibility, rather than meeting the needs of oneself in itself is a very high risk factor for developing illness. 
like any pattern, in the subconscious mind, it can be broken and changed into something else. In my own experience, in terms of functional medicine or acupuncture or bioenergetic synchronization technique, I rarely use these techniques anymore because I can make a much more meaningful and productive treatment for my patients by targeting these unconscious patterns. My wife has been fully cleared of any un undesired, harmful, unconscious patterns in her past. And she routinely maintains good rapport with her subconscious. So she regularly clears out. She knows exactly how to maintain her own subconscious. And in doing so, she has no symptoms at all, no inflammation. She's never had more vigor, more strength, or more energy for life. She fully speaks her mind and no longer suppresses any emotions. So go to my page, Dr. Gabe Roberts, and like it or tag a friend as I continue to go in depth on the mind, how it works, and show you the greatest part of you is something that you'll never see.